What's up, Modern Stedders? Today's Friday, and guess what Friday is? Friday is Modern Stedder Update! Woohoo! Today, we're gonna start backwards. We usually start over by New York City and New Pork City, but today we're gonna start with the Bard Rock meat birds. So before we go out there, let's get the grain so we can feed them and move the tractor for them to fresh pasture. They'll be so happy. That kelp right there, it sure smells like the ocean, fishy ocean. You want to go out? It's pretty warm and sunny out today, so don't forget to check their water. We don't want them going thirsty. Eh, we might as well top it off while we're right here. And somebody asked in the comments, do you buy your chickens bottled water? No, I don't buy them bottled water. This just makes an awesome container to transport the water to the chickens. <laughs> What you find? Anything good? Huh? 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 We're looking at you and you're looking at us, huh? Is that what we're doing? So these Bard Rock roosters are pretty good size. So I'm thinking right now, the Bard Rock roosters would dress out around three pounds. I'd like to get them to dress out around four or five pounds once they're all done and harvested. So we're hoping in another two to three weeks, we can bring these guys over to the harvesting block and we can get these guys in the new plucker and then get them in the freezer. I will say, I like raising these a lot better than the Cornish crosses. They don't eat as much as fast and they don't grow as fast, which is fine. But they're just a much pleasant looking bird. You saw the cornices we raised. A lot of them didn't even have all their feathers. And their poo stunk. They weren't very pleasant to look at. These guys are friendly, they're pretty, and hopefully they taste just as good. And they're not eating anywhere near as much. It's amazing how much less grain these guys eat and how much more grass they eat. Now if I did that to the Cornish crosses, they'd be over here swarming all the food and they'd just be pecking at your toes. I can walk in here, my toes stay intact and it's just so much more peaceful and quiet and it smells so much better in here. I'm telling you, I like these guys a lot better. These guys are doing great. They're about half the size as the Silky. These guys need to go into New York City with all the other chickens. They're big enough to go over there and they got New York cribs to hide in. I just gotta get the time, get them crated up one night and get them in New York City one night. So maybe one of the next few nights I can get them over there. That'd be awesome. And then it'd be one less chicken tractor to move. Look at Blackie, look how good she's doing. Her back's all hailed up. She's all feathered in. Hey look, we got not just one Icelandic egg today, but we got two, yes! Put them right there for now. As you can see, Blackie is settling in nicely with all the other Icelandic chickens. 
Rufus and the two other girls are treating her nicely. I just wanted to thank the subscriber again for recommending putting Blackie in with the Icelandic chickens. It's working great and Rufus is being really nice to her. Thank you. Now I dump their food on the ground to get them to know the ground is where their food comes from so they're gonna peck, scratch it and get as many bugs as they want and grass. Pluto misses our friend Blackie from the basement. I just feel having them eat off the ground encourages them to eat more grass and more bugs. They learn, hey, this is where my food comes from, not a bucket. Oh, makes kind of sense to me, right? Now we're coming up to the squash garden. This thing's doing amazing. Let me get in there and show you. This thing's doing amazing, let's see. Here are the cucumbers. They're starting to get long. Do a little bit of weeding while we're right here. But look, they're starting to get lengthy, some length to them. And then over here you got your summer squash and zucchini. I mean, they're already starting to get some small buds on them. The plants are doing awesome. We'll be having fruit before you know it. Look at that. Yep. Look at that. These things are just amazing. They're jamming. And then back here, I think this is summer squash. The row we were just in is zucchini. They're just going to town too. They're gonna to be budding out and flowering before we know it. And then here, we have our spaghetti squash. They're starting to get pretty long. And they're doing really good. Look at that, it smells so good over here too. And we got the row we just planted last week. These are the pumpkins. And then back here we got our winter squash. Look at this plant. That's just doing awesome. It's starting to flower out already. Look at that. Look at that. Once this garden area starts producing some vegetables, we're gonna be loaded. We're gonna be inundated with summer squash and zucchini and cucumbers. They're gonna be coming out of our ears. That's a great problem to have. I can't wait till we have that problem. You hot? Is it hot out? We finally got some heat here in New Hampshire. No more cold and rain for today. The summer squash and zucchini and winter squash that we planted the other day in the hay bales is doing awesome. If you guys didn't see that video, I'll post a link to it right here. But look at these. We haven't watered them. We haven't done anything to them. Yeah, they might be a little yellow, but that's just because they got so much water. They're gonna green up before you know it. I mean, they already got a little, some blossoms going on. That's just amazing. And look at the potato tower. Look at that. These guys are just jamming. They're all coming back up. Hey, look at all that. We're gonna have a lot of vegetables. Just like the garden we were just doing with all the other squashes, we haven't done anything to that. We leveled it off, we put the plants in it, and we haven't watered it. We didn't even water it once we transplanted it. That's just how great of an area it is to plant your vegetables after your pigs have been there. And then in these hay bales, we haven't touched them either. It's just amazing what you can grow if you just let your animals do all the work for you. And right up here is where the outdoor kitchen is going to be. Look how much gravel we ended up having to put in. Look at all that gravel. But we got that all nice and leveled off and flattened. We got the sand in there. If you guys haven't seen our latest video on the outdoor kitchen build, I'll put a link to that video right here for you. The pigs are doing good. They're rooting up in here nicely. They got it turning pretty good. These pigs are growing amazing. As soon as I get some time, I gotta build a little pasture area for them over there by New York City, and then we'll get the pigs into New Pork City. Hey, that's my shirt. That's not food. That's not food. 
I'm hoping if it doesn't rain this weekend, we can build a pasture area for the pigs out under the apple orchard and past that, and we can get these guys eating some fresh greens too. You guys wanna eat some fresh greens? I bet you do. Yep. They love the automatic waterer. If you guys want to know how to build an automatic water, I'll put a link to that video right here. That's a really fun video me and Olivia did last year, and the pigs love that, and it's so convenient. These tomatoes are jamming. They're starting to get all butted out. We got a few green tomatoes right here. Boom, what's that? One, two on this plant. One on this plant, so that's three total so far. Four, five. This one doesn't have any yet. Let's get this one trellised over. I'm not seeing any on this plant. So we got five so far. This one's all flowering out, getting ready to get some tomatoes growing on it. Same with this one. Get that tucked in the cattle panel. This one's got a little tiny, so that makes six. Go over to this side. Seven, eight. Let's see if we got any tomatoes over here. Look at that one's gonna be a tomato before you know it. So we got eight so far. Oh, nine. So we got nine green tomatoes started here. That's just awesome for Northern New Hampshire. And today's July 5th, nine green tomatoes. That's awesome. That's a win in my book. And you know what that means? We're gonna be having some BLTs with some pasture-aged bacon from last year. Before you know it, I'm looking forward to that. And then hopefully the gluten-free sourdough starter we got started in the house will work awesome and we can have some really good gluten-free bread to put with these BLTs. These onions are doing nice. Our cold weather crops, it was so cold and wet, really didn't do much. We'll have to keep an eye on them. They're growing good right now. Oh, here's broccoli, but I'm assuming they're gonna bolt out on us. They'll start flowering, because it's gonna be too warm for them. Some cabbages. The pepper plants, they greened up. I peed on them. I haven't put any Epsom salt on them. The only thing I did to these guys is I peed on them. In our last week Modern Stetter update, our pepper plants were pretty yellow. I ended up peeing on them, and that's how they greened up. We ordered some Epsom salt, but we haven't put any Epsom salt on them. Just pure Modern Stetter urine. And look at these guys. Boom! We got a couple of peppers that are gonna be starting on each one. Look at that. I'm telling you, just go outside and pee on all your plants. It works amazing. Now, if you take prescription drugs, don't go and pee on. But as long as you're eating good, you're healthy, and you're not taking prescription, pee on your plants, and you got some awesome organic nitrogen. The beets are starting to do pretty good. They're starting to come up there slow, but we've been getting a lot of rain. This soil's compacted pretty hard with all the rain we've been getting. And when I say we've been getting a lot of rain, we've been getting a lot of rain. Look and see what we got in three days. That's right, three and a half inches. One and a half of those inches we got in an hour the other night. It was crazy. So we've been getting a lot of rain. But look at the corn. I mean, that's just amazing. I mean, that corn is knee high by the 4th of July. So that's awesome. Today's July 5th and look how tall it is. We're gonna be having some really good corn, and then next year we'll plant even more. This being a raised bed, I didn't know how good the corn was gonna do. We found out for our area, we need to start our corn seeds in the basement in soil blocks. That's what we did here. And look at these guys, they're jamming. Oh yeah, and I peed on them a few times. That gives them some awesome nitrogen fertilizer. And then thanks to Kirsten, I hope I said that right, Kirsten, we planted some pole beans next to our corn. They haven't come up yet, but once they do, we're gonna have some pole beans growing on our corn. Right over here, we got our bush beans. We got purple ones here. 
They're gonna be budding out and flowering soon. They're looking nice. We had an issue with something eating our beans. I don't know if it was a rabbit. Some of you viewers thought we were having birds come down and eat the tops off them. Well, guess what? I peed on them and that took care of all of our predator problems. Our green beans are growing awesome now and we haven't had anything come back and eaten them. Look at them. So these are our blue bush beans. They're doing good. And these are our purple lake beans and they're doing amazing. Before we go to New York City, I want to show you how all of our apple trees are doing. They're doing amazing. Look at all those apples. Can you see them? Look at that. Look at them all. Oh, these things are beautiful. Now, I know a lot of people right now are plucking apples and peaches off their trees if they have too many, and they're saying they're going to get better fruits from doing that, and I believe it. But I just want to show you something. All the trees are doing it, but you can really see it where New York City used to be. Ready? Don't blink. Look. See all those? Those are apples that the tree is having fall off because it knows that it cannot sustain all those apples growing on that tree. So it's letting a bunch of them fall off. Ah! Mr. Biggs! So I'm not gonna worry about pruning and picking off a bunch of apples off my apple trees because Mother Nature's already doing all the work for me. So why do I need to do it? I don't know if that's because these are an old variety, an heirloom variety that they're doing it, and the newer trees that's not bred in them. I don't know. If you know the answer to that question, leave it in the comments down below. All right, let's go see how New York City and all the chickens are doing. Shut the fence off. I don't want to get bit. Hey guys. Mr. Biggs, do you want to say hello to everybody? <laughs> so the Icelandic chicks are doing good. They stay separated from the chickens. Mr. Biggs. So all the Icelandic chickens stay in their own flock. I have caught them a few nights sleeping out on the log pile. So I'll have to go pick them up one by one, two by two, and put them into New York City. And I think the reason is for that is a lot of the bod rock chicks kick them out, which isn't very nice. But you know what they say, there is a pecking order, and I'm glad for New York cribs for that reason. I feed all the Icelandic chicks in there, so we don't have to worry about them getting enough food. As you can see them, they're doing good. No chickens laying eggs this time, but we got quite a few eggs. Ew. You know what I do with that one? It's got poop all over it. I know what you're gonna say. Don't break the egg like that, then the chickens are gonna cannibalize their own eggs. Nope. Anytime we have a broke or a cracked egg, or a really dirty egg, that's all I do. I take them out of the nesting box, and I throw them on the ground, break them open, and they eat them. And I don't have a problem with them cannibalizing their own eggs. And I feed them back their own eggshells to them, just like that. I don't cook them or anything, and they don't touch their eggs. They only eat them when I break them open for them. Here are the ducks. There's one of the male ducks. There's the other male duck over there. The females are under New York City. We can't see them. But I know they're under there and they haven't come out with any new ducklings yet. But they'll be hatching them. I bet you within a week or any day now, we're gonna be having some baby ducklings running around New York City. And that's gonna be exciting. Let's go inside New York City and see what's going on. So they are eating some of their kelp, but not a lot but they have eaten all of their oyster shells for calcium. So I need to give them some more oyster shells so they can have free choice calcium. They do get fed their eggshells back, but sometimes they need more calcium. And when they need it, they know it, and they'll eat the oyster shells. We better plug New York City back in. That's why I put it out, come on.
So while we're right here, we needed sand to put down for our Alaskan slab in our outdoor kitchen. I don't know why, but there was a big old pile of sand right over here that the old owners left. I don't know if this was a sandbox for the kids because we always found toys in it and I found a matchbox car in it when I was raking it out inside the outdoor kitchen slab area or if it was leftover sand from when they put in the septic system. I'm not sure, but all I know is I'm thankful for it. There was one less thing I had to buy. I think we just have two more things to update you on. Over here, we ended up bringing the kombucha and putting it in the basement. The reason we did that is we checked it after seven days and it smelt a little yeasty. And the research we did was telling us is that it wasn't at a stable enough temperature. Being upstairs and the temperature outside fluctuating so much, we'll be 50 and then we'll be 90. I'm sure that's messing with the kombucha. So we put it in the basement and the temperature stays more even down here. So we're gonna give it probably another week and then we'll test it and we'll see how it is. And now let's go check on the Icelandic eggs we have in the incubator. It is day 24. I don't think they're gonna hatch. We had really good luck with this incubator the first time we've used it. And then I've, we're not having such good luck this time. And I've had a lot of people ask me about these incubators and they said they haven't been able to have any eggs hatch out of theirs. And that's what's going on here. These guys have been in here for 24 days now. The humidity's right, the temperature's right, or so the incubator's telling us, and they're not hatching. I don't know if they're getting too hot or if the humidity's off but it's not good and we're kind of disappointed. We wanted our Icelandic chicks to hatch. So we're gonna have to look and research and see if it's these incubators, if they need to go whoosh, and get some new ones, which would be a disappointment because we just bought them. But you know how it goes. You buy something, you do the research, it doesn't always pan out. So we'll keep you guys up to date on that and let you know if those are an incubator to invest in or not. If you guys have any recommendations with the incubators or the kombucha, leave it in the comments down below. We love hearing all your feedback, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.